Dungeon Crawler Network presents Tales of Tamriel. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 99 of Tales of Tamriel, a Dungeon Crawler Network production. I am your host, Ajelos, and with me this afternoon, the man, the myth, the legend, the healer who has not been around that often, and I miss him, Avi Optimal. How are you, sir? Oh, man. I know. I'm doing all right. I'm, doing all right. I'm, I'm pretty tired, but I'm here. I'm ready to talk some ESO, even though I haven't got to play any ESO because of damn work. Oh, but did did I crush your dreams? Because you've been crushing you mine I, lately. I had I had I had Estelle's face pop up in my pop up with her tear in her eye. Oh. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I've been feeling your absence lately, and I don't like it. And it needs to change because it it hurts me. I don't I don't deal well with change. I have I have Thursday off. There's th oh, good, good, good. Cause yes. you you missed some fun this Thursday. I mean, yes. it was uh, pretty sick. If you've been following the twitters, apparently shoot your eye out. Looked at me and was like, how in the world did you get six hundred and six hundred and forty eight Telvar stones in one kill? Yeah, it was fun. Wow, it, it was it was a lot of fun. I was giggling. But we'll we'll get to that. Sounds, sounds good. Also joining us, Esteldian from across the pond. How are you, sir? I'm uh, doing very well as always. Thanks. Uh, how have you been doing at all this week? Anything, anything, anything fun? I've been killing a lot and dying a lot in EverQuest One. Nice. <laughs> nice, nice. No, I've been dying in Maelstrom Arena. That sucks. Uh, and the guy I literally pulled on into the show two seconds before he was about ready to hop in the shower, so he may or may not be wearing pants. Grabby. <sighs> you know. Art. No, yeah, yeah. Thanks for asking me to come on. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, I just felt like it was a, a good time just to randomly pull you in. So, mm -hmm. um, you know that that is a, that is the thing. I just felt like it. So, yeah, yeah. As I'm t frantically typing in guild chat for people who want to come watch the show live. Oh. I should actually probably put this in the guild message of the day, shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, might be a good idea. Right, right. Well, before we roll into the game news, we got to first say I want to thank our, well, Patreon spotlight for this week, which is Stephanie Kraft. Um, I, I do want to give a special thank you to her. Uh, she was been supporting us since February 24th. Of 2015 and in fact she was our first patreon supporter and has been a continuous supporter since then so she was our first and longest running at this point so uh wow. yeah yeah she was the very first one to jump on board when we opened our patreon i think it was like one day after it was up she was there um i, I actually have to check because i'm not even really sure when we officially went live with it because i know i had a bunch of fans and stuff who were saying you guys should just open one and make it easier and i'm like okay I, I didn't even really even know what it was so i just up and looked it up and um yeah she was like right there so stephanie thank you so much for supporting us for at this point over a year so yeah she's been supporting us as long as avi and estelle have been on the show <laughs> yeah <laughs> It must have been us. It, it was you guys. Wow. Yeah. I'm no. seeing... yeah just, keep, just keep thinking that. It's, you know, it's, yeah. I'm seeing the, seeing the correspondence she here. Is she, my, is she my mysterious five-star review? It, it, it might be. <laughs> might be. That I'm still not convinced that you're not fibbing to me. It, it's got to be your mom. So, um, yeah, that, that was just too glowing of a review. It seemed highly suspect. It was more likely to be me myself. Than, uh... <laughs> 
yeah, if my mom wrote a review, it would be awful. He's like, it's terrible. He doesn't write me on my birthday. I'm like, oh, my. <laughs> Don't take it out on the show that he's terrible. Come on now. Um, but, yes, all right. So thank you, Stephanie, for all well, your over a year of continuous support. We really do appreciate it. <clears throat> Um, as always, this episode is brought to you just uh, by awesome fans just like Stephanie who do support us over at patreon.com slash Dungeon Crawler Network. Uh, if you want to support us financially, that's the place to do it. Uh, sign up for like a monthly subscription. As little as a dollar a month, it all helps us out. It all gets put together in one nice little plump of delicious, amazing cake. No, they pay me in cake. They don't do cash. It's cake. Uh, and it gets sent to me. Um but yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, if you can't, you can always share that. Cake. I could. Let me, throw, let me just throw that out here. But cake. All right. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. If you can't support us financially, uh, you can support us by subscribing to us on YouTube, by um, leaving us a five star review on iTunes, or telling a friend about us. All those things help us out as much. And obviously, a lot of you guys have been doing so because we've seen a a from what my metrics are saying something like a, a bump of almost 700 new viewers in the past probably month and a half so thank you so much for all you guys who are contributing by telling friends about us because that all helps us out so thank you so much i'm sorry and not you crabby <laughs> you have no friends to tell <laughs> oh <laughs> Whatever. You have no friends to tell, Crowley. Oh, my friends are right here. Oh, oh, my geez. oh shucks. Oh, shucks. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, wow. Well, you don't like you either. Screw you. Kidding, <laughs> um, yeah, so. All right, let's go ahead, and we're going to move right on into the game news as I'm checking the stream health to make sure everything's okay because I'm trying new settings, and I'm hoping it doesn't explode. Um, hello to the chat room. I see Zakir. Welcome to the chat room, sir. Thank you so much for coming in. All right. First up on the news docket is the animation system changes are being rolled back with patch 2.3.4 and will not be taken to live. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read this for everyone. So this is verbatim. Uh, this was on the forums, I believe. Yes, the forums. Uh, just want to update everyone where we're at with the animation prioritization efforts going on right now. At its core... The goal uh, for change was to make it clear which attacks players are using while preserving the responsiveness of combat. We've made great strides towards this, but this is still a number of cases where things just don't look or feel right. Blocking, for example. As such, we're going to be rolling back this change in next week's PTS patch 2.3.4 and... Um, will not be taking it to the live servers. We will continue to iterate upon the system internally and will roll out the changes when they're ready. So Thieves Guild was supposed to have the change for animation uh, priorities set. That is now no longer the case. That is being rolled back. I always thought it was kind of weird how they were like, yeah, I mean, we're going to have this new... Um animation change where you're, you're going to see the animation and uh, so people know you're casting, but it won't affect animation canceling. Yeah, I kind of... It's kind of like, it's like, well, do you know, do you know what animation canceling is? Like, of course they don't. Kinda, they don't fixed it. <laughs> but that's why, I'm, like, I don't know. It always took a weird change in the first place, so I, I don't know. It, <sighs> it seems like the all the comments after this are pretty happy that they're doing this, so... I, I, okay, I, now that I finally got good internet and I can actually weave better, I mean, I'm not great at it yet, but I'm much better, um, because my ping is not 300 all the time, um, actually my ping right now is 49, which is pretty sick compared to what I was normally at. I can animation and weave fairly, fairly consistently now, so my DPS has shot up by several thousand. Um, but with that said, I almost, well, I don't know. I guess it's one of those things like right now, cause I'm not super good at it. And I mean, that's, if they would remove it, I think it would, it would take some of the skill away from players, but at the same time, it's kind of a cheesy thing. It is. Yeah. I mean, it's not even, it's not even really skill. It's whack-a-mole. 
it's just if you have the better your connection is like it was very hard for me if you have really bad connection to the server um but once i have my better internet i'm hitting it 95 percent of the time um it's i don't know i feel like I, I feel like there are better ways to test a player's skill than than essentially force canceling animation so i was kind of hoping it would be removed and yet i'm kind of relieved because then i don't have to learn it because the way they were saying was that oh it's not going to be removed it's not going to be removed because when they first announced it yeah gina came on saying no 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 this isn't it's not going anywhere don't don't you worry it's it's not going anywhere um um it's just we're changing how it works so you still be able to animation cancel it's just gonna be different how you do it so i'm like oh great now i have to learn how to do it with all my abilities again i just got done learning it um but i don't know i mean they're still it's not scrapped it's just being take it's not ready yet so they're they're taking it back so yeah, they said we may see it again in the future so i imagine we'll see it on the pts again during dark brotherhood at least to see iterations of it you know what i mean like it'll come on again it may not go live but they'll show us what they have and get feedback on it like they normally do and be like okay this is you know you've you've had the animation canceling in previous patches how do you think it is now is it any better does it work better for you blah 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 blah. and if people are like yeah yeah it's it's better it's better or we have all the stuff now then they may push it out but we'll we'll have to wait and see um Estelle, and I know when they moved the servers to the EU side, which didn't actually improve ping at all, from what I from what I hear. Uh, did you have issues with animation canceling, or did you have people who were doing DPS complain of it? Uh, no, everyone seemed fairly comfortable with it. But then the ping's usually under a hundred, so it's good enough. <laughs> you had the usual complaints. Some people hate it. Some people love it. Right. Um, for me, I, I was never a big fan of the animation cancelling. I, mean, I, don't, I don't mind weaving, which I know is a form of animation cancelling, but the other form, of course, is where you actually use your interrupt or bash, rather, to or use your block bash, whatever. I can't remember what it was now. You do all sorts of cancelling stuff to make things even quicker. I well, the weaving cancelling. with light attack, essentially, is the exact same thing you were just mentioning, but there's also block animation cancelling. There's... There, there's various kinds of animation canceling, whether it's through yeah, block, I mean, through interrupt. Weaving's very basic, so I had no problem with that. Cause it, it didn't actually look all that bad either, because you sort of light weave and go into your main attack, so it yeah. kind of looked fairly smooth. Whereas when you do say a wrecking blow or whatever, and then you hit, or, or what's it, um, breath of life, and you breath of life, and then you right click to suddenly block so that you cancel the rest of the animation, and then you do your next thing, that all looked a bit messy. And right. I'd like to see that kind of crap gone. Oh, I should do that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you may as well use it, man. It's yeah, I'm never take effective. advantage of that while it's there. Zakir in chat saying people are running animation canceling scripts to sort of cheat the system. I wouldn't say sort of. That's pretty much right out cheating the system. And if you're caught, you will be you will be uh, banned for that. They've already come out and said animation canceling is an intended byproduct if you will they're not going to remove it they like the way that people are using it which to me it's like well then why don't you just shorten your own animations or something like rather than having people animation cancel but anyway that's beside the point if you're using any third party assistance to to help you you will get banned that's against the terms of service so um if anyone is doing that just be prepared because you could get your account lost. There's your public server announcement for the day. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it is. I understand people run straight. I know this. that was a big thing, and I'm sure you can even attest to that uh, from Project 99 and EverQuest, the scripts to run multiple abilities at once and things like that. That kind of went all the way from then. Um, yeah. But... Um, accidentally tumbling off keep battlements is my preferred method of animation canceling. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, Glassnear says that's his preferred. I, 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 I was not familiar with that method, but I'll be sure to try it next time. <laughs> uh, that's that's really funny. I like that. Um, yeah, so that's a preferred. 
form of animation canceling. Um, is anyone upset that there's animation canceling in the game? <clears throat> eh. Nah. No. It seems nah, like it's pretty much part of the game at this point. So. Yeah. Well, that you know, it's one of those things where the DPS increase, if I'm on, not doing any animation canceling, I'm doing like 9K <clears throat> DPS. If I do animation canceling, I'm doing 15 to 17. It's That's kind of kind of ridiculous if it's that much. It I mean, it's that much, sir. Like I can show you logs of me just doing my same rotation without animation canceling, waiting till it's done, doing a light attack or whatever between each one and I'm going to do maybe 8 to 10k and I will do 17 to 20 with animation canceling. It's significant. Hence why my DPS when I was at my old house, you know, like when I was first doing trials, and I and I do want to thank uh, Ghost Shot and uh, Dreadlords for taking me along because they're like, oh, we'll take you. Don't worry about it. Even though my DPS was subpar, a lot of it was because of I couldn't animation cancel with the terrible lag that I had. Um, and that made it very hard. Now that I have a good connection, I am doing 15 to 17K single target, and it amazes me. I'm sitting there going... You know, I knew there was a difference. I didn't know it was that substantial. It is mm -hmm. substantial. It's it's not. So if anyone's like, "Oh, don't worry, animation canceling doesn't do that much." Oh, it you're they're wrong. Like I will, I'll do it live on stream one day. Like I'll just go in there and just, you know, do the let the whole attack go through single light attack. However, what my normal uh, combat rotation is, and you'll see my DPS on my recount. And then I'll do it with animation canceling, and you'll see massive. Uh, Outcast from Hodor did that already, showing the difference between animation canceling and not. And it is exceptional. I think he was showing um, Wrecking Blow, uh, Wrecking Blow uh, animation canceling, and he was showing. Well, I'll do it slow, so he wasn't really doing it. He was only getting maybe one in five, whatever, and he was doing like nine K, and he shot up to like twenty one when he was doing it correctly. So it is substantial. Uh, I don't, I'd say I don't mind the weaving part, but it just annoys me that why you need to animation cancel. Why is Wrecking Blow got a 0 0.8 second cast time and yet its animation is one and a half seconds long? It's like, seriously, what? there's no reason for that. Right. Just give it a proper animation so you don't need to worry about cancelling anything. You, you definitely have a, a point there. I mean, that's some of it goes back to the design of the whole thing. You're, you have these long animations, but most of the damage is being done in the first bit. Why are you finishing it off? Uh, biting jabs, for instance, even like the four attacks, once it's done, it's done. And that's why people animation cancel it, because it's like, why wouldn't they just speed up the animation so that the entire animation is, you know, while it's going on, and then people wouldn't need to animation cancel. But I don't know. Yeah. It is what I it can is. Underst I can understand with instant spells, it can be tricky because they're instant, so you can have an animation longer than the spell. But anything with the cast time, there's no reason for this animation to go on beyond. Right, right, right. So, yeah, no, I, I agree. There's, there's some that, that don't even need it. All right, next a little bit of news. Uh, the, they did a, a little message here or a... Um, I guess it's a guide or whatever, announcing the loyalty rewards for DLC game packs in the future. Um, in Coming forward, they're going to be adding rewards to encourage people to buy DLC. Um, this just, again, this is something that I know I tweeted out. I know Sigrid tweeted out. A bunch of people are like, uh, does this apply to people with ESO Plus? It does. So it's how, as long as you have the expansion or a DLC pack, you're eligible for these loyalty rewards, however it is you do it. So ESO Plus subscribers, of course, will automatically get it as well. You're going to get a quest to go into the cities, and right now they're adding it for Rothgar and um, Thieves Guild. Uh, so you'll get a quest saying go to Abba's Landing or Rothgar, and then you'll actually get a pet. Right now you get that little, uh, what are they called, Echolets or whatever they are? You know right. what I'm um, you're getting one of those, which I know we did a few episodes back. We had um, a DLC, not a DLC, a uh, data mine where a bunch of people brought, you know, data mined all this new new pets and things, and people are saying, oh, it's all Crown Store stuff. Well, I know Zoss listened to a bunch of us because I know we talked to them saying, hey, you maybe you should consider adding rewards in the game, not just the Crown Store. 
um, you know, for people to encourage playing the game. And they are doing that because not every single one was DLC. They're actually for owning, well, I guess it is kind of buying it one way that are supporting, but I mean, it's a step in the right direction, definitely. Um, it's now, just, this is coming with Thieves Guild? Yeah, yeah, you'll retroactively be able to pick up the quest. Like, when even if you finish Rothgar and everything like that, you'll be able to go into the zone and you'll get a quest saying, you know, uh, a gift from Rothgar or something like that. And then you have to go turn it in and you'll get the little Echolet pet. And they're also giving us a Jackal pet for, um, for, uh, Thieves Guild. Guild. Yeah. All right. All, all I can think of when this, when I saw this was, it's a Jackal. A it's jackal. a Jackal. It's a Jackal. It's a Jackal. It's a Jackal. Jackal. I saw. I just started cracking up. I was like, "Oh man, it's a jackal!" I think I'm I was gonna... hoping it was gonna be that little fire dragon thing. That's probably that. That's definitely Crown Store. And actually, oh, yeah. speaking of Crown Store, they did show us the Crown Store update for February 24th, uh, including the pirate costume pack, the Hammerfell camel, oh. the Kindle Spit Dragon Frog, which is yes. the thing you just mentioned, and the freckled Guar. As well as they're adding the mercenary motif into the crown store and the crown mimic stones, uh, including also two assistants, uh, Tithis Andromo the banker and Nuzima the merchant. Uh, please note, just another PSA for these assistants. If you don't know what they are that are coming with the Thieves Guild, you're going to earn one of them in game, um, and two of them are in the in the crown store. But they are merchants that kind of work like pets but that serve a function so you can call them out you either can have a pet out or you can have one of these guys and they will perform a service for a fee um the fee is of course in-game gold or whatever so like uh when you summon the banker he will allow you to bank your stuff maybe you have to pay him a little bit of gold before before he allows you to do the you know do that which is which is totally cool same thing with the merchant he'll sell you stuff or he'll sell your stuff for you but he may take 25 percent off the top uh the guy you get from uh the quest line the guy who will sell your your stolen goods takes a 35 percent cut uh, a bunch of stuff like that so these are also you can do it while you're out in the field also take note that if one person has it and summons the person anyone in his anyone can interact with it they still have to pay the fee but they can all interact so you unless don't you're in, unless you're in Cyrodiil they will not go into Cyrodiil <clears throat> I'm not super thrilled with this crown store thing okay I but, mean the only thing I'm most excited about is is honestly that dragon frog I don't I mean the costumes and eh, the camel eh, I don't know I just I'm not I'm not totally into it this uh this coming month I don't know well okay camels I, I i i know what you're saying um, although i i don't completely understand the mimic stone okay you know how if you look at the crown store right now they were uh with like the glass you could buy the malik malachite yeah from from there well they're doing away with that right now like they're actually just removing so that way you don't have to sit there because someone asked in one of the eso lives are you ever going to release uh like the uh, the gold scale for the Akaviri style, like in the Crown Store, and they're like, "Well, we've rethought how we're doing that. We're actually going to take away the the Malachite, but we're going to add a universal item, which is what these Mimic Stones are. Oh, wow. So, it, okay. it, it using one of these Mimic Stones, it will be for all styles." So you don't necessarily need Malachite for glass or gold scale for Akaviri or. Uh, you know, or corundium for Nord. I don't know why you would use it for you know, Nord, but you know that's what it is. It's uh, an item that allows you to pick any style you have learned and yeah. use it. I mean, with the um, with the amount of motifs in the game and the more that are coming, there's going to be so many style items. It's going to be insane. Yeah, and style items in game to earn is fine, but I understand why they're doing this, and it makes complete sense. Yeah, yeah, no, that's actually. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it is. So instead of buying, like, right now you can go in the Crown Store and buy 10 Malachite. Well, now it's going to be you can buy 10 of these, uh, you know, the Mimic Stones that will work for any style you have learned, whether it's glass, whether it's Zivkin, whether it's anything, anything at all. Um, 
So it's just a universal, I can use it for whatever. I think, what did they call them? Sigix? I don't remember. Something like that. But, you know, because it's Sigix. <laughs> Um, but no, it's it's a good it's a good change. If you're going to add it in, it is definitely an interesting change. Um, Arch, not with Thieves Guild. Oh, um, Clan of Orphan says I asked during live. They said they are not planning to announce pricing on those anytime soon. I'm assuming you're talking the merchants. Um, the crown ones are coming at the end of March. Not with Thieves Guild. Um, obviously, yeah, because I think they, yeah, it says on here the banker will be available on March 31st, and so will the merchant. So they're coming at the end of the month. Um, I know the mercenary style is one of the things, it, it, just judging by what you were saying, Krabby, with you're not impressed with it, is because a lot of the stuff in here, I mean, you, they have mounts, they have pets. They have two mounts, one pet, and a costume pet. Well, I'm not, it's not that I'm not impressed. It's just that none of it I, I really care about. Well, I mean... Like, I mean, if you do pledges, I'd be very surprised if you don't have most of the mercenary motifs. Honestly, and I don't mean this as any any slight to, to Zoss, because, you know, I want them to get their money, but you'd be dumb as a player to buy mercenary style, because right now each page is less than like a thousand gold. Yeah. You could buy the entire thing for under twenty K. Get twenty K, go buy every page. Yep. It, don't 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 buy it in the store. Now that being said, I don't know if Zoss will change their mind anytime soon and maybe decrease the drop rate. I actually I feel like I heard they were going to do that. You know, I actually think despite the fact that for the crown store, they I think they need to do it now anyway, because it's gotten so bad. I mean, it's it's not even exciting to get one. Like I understand, like they don't want to make it like the the Sigic Ambrosia recipe one because I think they've decreased the drop rate on that, but it's just not very good. So you're excited when you get one of those, but more often than not, you're just frustrated because it takes so long to find them. But these ones, it's not even exciting when you get them because it's like, great, I only got five of these so far, you know. Yeah, that's 400 gold. Yeah. I, I, I don't have any source on this, but I could have sworn I read or saw somewhere saying they were going to adjust the drop rate because it's too high. It is too high. Even from a you know business perspective, if they want to sell the their their crown store motif, it's too high now. Even if it wasn't in the crown store, it's just you get you get one every time you get a gold key. Now I know the number's not exactly that, but it's like ninety percent chance. So it it might as well be you know. Mm -hmm. um, Avi, what are your thoughts on the crown store? Anything that interests you? Uh, no, not really. I still don't like the assistance or the merchant idea. I say, I say stop being lazy and go to town. Mm. Um, I'm, I've never been a fan of camels, and I think the costume is a little, uh, plain, I guess you can say. Right. But, well, yeah, I know they have some higher end piratey costumes coming. This is probably just the first one, because I think they, what was it? Two episodes ago, I think we talked about a couple data mined, and I think I pulled them up on the screen. There were like four different pirate costumes. There was like this right, one, and then there was like you know like the deck captain one that you know you look like Jack Sparrow. Like there were different ones. This is probably just the first. Um, well, I mean, I think I think it's cool. It, there's there's cool stuff. Just nothing really interests me. I think the guar the guar looks pretty cool. Now you can ride a guar, have a guar following you, a yeah. whole bunch of guar. So, Guar, yeah. Guarception, I get you. Guar, yeah. Uh, I actually do like the camel mount, because I think even when Craglorn came out, I was like, I can't wait to ride a camel, so I will probably get the camel. I have, also... you wrote, have you rode it on the PTS yet? No, I haven't. I... It's hilarious. I, I heard the back I can't even... I can't even handle it. I watch. I'm like, this is just, this is just ridiculous. I heard like, the I back legs kind of don't bend properly, or like you kind of bounce, like the back legs like bounce up or something. Um, let's see here. Single, um, sorry, you guys keep, I'm trying to read the chat here and I kind of got lost cause I looked away from it for too long. Uh, uh yeah, well the, uh, the camel mounts just look ridiculous in my opinion. Most, most mounts they put in the game, I think can fit sort of in the whole world of Tamriel camels. No. 
Well, no, camels can definitely. Yeah. The thing that the thing about Elder Scrolls is this game is considered low fantasy, so I expect to see mundane animals, like. Even when you when you play Marwind, and actually, let me ask this question here from Single Malt: Can we earn the banker and merchant companions doing stuff in game? No, they're crown store. Um, the only one you can earn in game is the one from the Thieves Guild who will the fence. I couldn't remember the word. Um, the fence is the only thing you can actually earn in game. The merchant and everything are, are not. Uh, but again, with these items, if someone in your group has one, um, you know you can you can use it if they pull it out. I mean, they're convenience items too. I, I mean, I, I mean, I guess I get it. I don't. It doesn't bother me. No, it doesn't um, bother me at all. Because I'm used to it from like WoW and stuff. Like, uh, does anyone have a Jeeves? You know that kind of thing. It's, right, right. It, it it doesn't really bother me, but I want the costs to be up there. Like, I literally want a thirty five percent cost on these things. Like taking thirty five percent of your profit. So you actually have to physically think. Well, do I want to leave my farming spot, or am I too far in a dungeon? Am I willing to take a 35% profit cut, or is it just better to run into um, a town? You know what I mean? Like, as long as the the benefit can't be there that it's so good that... That there's uh, no reason to no go reason. town at all. It's like, why would you? I have 200 slots, okay? I will never use a merchant... Are a banker if there's a fee, uh, unless we're in the middle of doing something and I'm not going to get a chance to go back to town anytime soon, and I just want to get rid of some like junk items. E every other time, I will always go back to town to get the maximum benefit. You know, oh. like it has to be a tight situation for me to go. Well, I really don't. You know, I'm in the middle of Maelstrom Arena and I didn't clear my bags, and I don't want to leave. Or you know, I'm in the middle of a trial. And I, my bags are full, and I don't want to leave because we're timed. Then I'll accept it. You know what well, I mean? It, it makes me laugh because a lot of games obviously bring out these. Geez, Rift had it. You said WoW had it. This has it. And mm -hmm. you know, one of the complaints about the modern MMO is it's so crazy convenient to do everything. Anyway, you can get around so fast, port to a place nearby, sell up or whatever. The idea of needing convenience just seems so unnecessary. It's like, is it that hard to sell up? Where, where are you ever? There's no content in the game that takes too long. That you'd, that you'd run out of bag space before you finished it. Right. right. You know? <laughs> it's just, just I seems agree. Crazy to... it, it, it is what, it, like I said, it's one of those things where I think this will only serve people who who haven't maxed out their bag space, for instance, or something along along those lines. I don't I don't think it'll be all that great. Uh, I guess if you're farming a Delve in Cyrodiil for AA... You know, they don't come out in Cyrodiil, though, so you're oh, SOL yeah, out it's... there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but, but, but will they... Oh, no, yeah, I suppose it still counts even in a Delve. Mm, no, nope, yeah, so, still yeah, counts. Uh, yeah. yeah, I did find that comment kind of weird where they said the merchant won't come out in Cyrodiil because war is bad for business. Yeah. I don't think war is bad for business at war, all. That's... War, war is good for business. War is definitely good for business. Yeah, yeah that is a strange comment. About. Yeah. You know, oh, it's funny. Goodness. I mean, when I first when I first heard about these being on the crown store, at first I was kind of like, eh, I didn't really like it. And then I was like, well, you know what? I play Guild Wars 2, and you could literally buy bankers and any other type of convenience item under the sun. On their on their uh, cash shop. So, the more I thought about it, the more I was like, "Well, it's fine. It's it's a straight up convenience item. It doesn't affect anything." Yeah, it really doesn't. And like I said, as Esteldian said, if you're that tied up to using one, um, you must be in serious straits because nothing in this game. It's not like some of these indie MMOs that we talked about, you know, Saga of Sigma, Pantheon, that are talking about making the adventure take a very long time like you're not going when you leave you're not going back to town in 30 minutes in an hour you'd be lucky you make it back to town in, in five eight hours and unless well, you hit that situation this game isn't going to need it other than like i said you're in a trial or something it's being timed you're trying to be discord you just need to free some bag space or you forgot to empty bag space in a dungeon and then it's like do i really want it yeah maybe i could well, see myself it. using the vendor a lot Another one of my problems is that is that Nuzima and Tithis and Dramo. It's like you're in the middle of, I don't know, we got a Red Guard and a Dunmer, you know? So you're in the middle of freaking, I can't think of any place, Grotwood, whatever. You're in the middle of Grotwood, and all of a sudden, a Red Guard lady just, like, 
appears out of nowhere and says, "All right, let me let me buy your stuff." Hmm. Lore wise, I just think that's kind of weird, you know. Like Skyrim did it differently, where they had like Dramora, Dramora servants pop up out of nowhere, you know, because they're Dramora, they can do that. It makes a little more sense. I think the idea of having some random red guard girl run up is like, uh, well, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> depends if you're. <laughs> depends where you're at. People aren't pets, eggs. I don't. I don't buy the fantasy of yeah. pulling a pet out your butt. No. You mean a person? Go down and and go to that one bar called Stallions. There's a very high chance I might pull someone out my butt. Just saying. See what Single Malt just said is um, if the merchant can repair, that would be awesome. That's true. If the merchant can into, repair, you go into a delve a pledge and you're like, oh crap, I forgot to repair. Just pop them out and do it. See, this is where what they should have. Screw the merchant, make it a crafting perk where I can carry an anvil with me if I'm a high enough crafter and be able to repair people's gear for them. That would be cool. You know? I or at least make the repair kits. Well, yeah. Well, see, repair kits one way or the other just drop prices. I mean, it's on a merchant, so you could buy them. I just think it'd be neat if you had the metal in your bag or whatever, you could repair gear. That would really be cool. Um, or if you... If you were a high enough crafter, you could repair your own gear. So, C14 allowed you to repair. That was always something that was cool. That'd be, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how do you lug around a 100 pound or 100 pound solid metal anvil? Uh, same question as how do you carry 200 uh, void steel great swords in a backpack? You get this bag, all right? It's a little bag. It's, it's a little bag, waist. yeah. With this little bag around your waist, and you can put anything in it. <laughs> Glassner's like a pouch. magic. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's it's you're still arguing the same notion here of whether or not um, you know, like you can really carry all these swords and stuff in your bag too. I mean, I don't know about you, a single sword. Like I have many one. An average sword is supposed to weigh somewhere in the three to four pounds. Uh, for at least a broadsword, maybe a little less, depending on on what it is. Um, but three to four pounds times you know a hundred, it's a lot of weight to carry. What if you like... carrying a bunch of William Wallace swords around? That's like ten pounds of sword, and you know. <laughs> yeah. Every D and every D and D gamer knows the bag of holding, which. Mm -hmm. can hold the... X amount of slots and has no weight limit to it. That's there what the bag go. of holding's for. The bag of holding. Um, hey, Obi, welcome to the chat room, buddy. Thanks for showing up. And uh, happy birthday, sir. It's, it's Obi's birthday, so everyone wish him a nice birthday. Oh, happy, happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to get back to the camel. I like the camel because I kind of like to ride around on things like if I were adventuring in the area. If if I went over, you know, and, you know, I want to ride down the beach in, in Saudi Arabia with my shirt open and my long hair flowing in the wind, as you can see, I'm going to ride a camel because it just works. Um, and then you have a camel but, running around stone uh, falls jumping up Apparently the camel doesn't work. Oh, well, the camel doesn't work. I it guess. has salty legs. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> right. You call me fat? Is that what it is? Maybe. Am I too fat for my camel? <sighs> What, what, fifteen dollar McDonald's, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> the sad part is I just spent fifteen bucks at McDonald's the other day. Again. I got I got a free burrito from Chipotle today. I saw like that was the highlight of your yeah, guild chat right it was, there. It was really good. That's I don't I don't like Chipotle. Get out. <laughs> Zakir, oh so dreamy. My, my eyes are full, full of vision of a jealous in a pirate shirt. See, there you go. I'm gonna wear that pirate outfit and ride the camel, and my cat will not stop chewing on my stuff. <laughs> he, just, he just picks up a cat and talks. <laughs> throw Khajiit around. <laughs> she's sitting at, now. She now she's giving me a, a dirty look. Like why'd you do that? And I'm like now I feel bad. I mean, you're chewing on my mic. Um. Wicked, someone, oh, I saw that same person on Twitter, Wicked, and I wanted to reach through the computer and, and stab him. Again, Elder Scrolls is low fantasy, so when you're playing Marwyn, they even say, even people in game don't find it normal. They're like, Marwyn's alien to people, because it's like the weirdest province in Tamriel. Um, 
they are they completely fit the Elder Scrolls universe. Absolutely, they fit just as much as a horse does. You know, I, I think it's I think it's mainly that the the newer games haven't been to Hammerfell or High Rock. So when see, people see a camel and haven't seen them in any of the other Elder Scrolls games, it's like this world has camels. But they have been in the other Elder Scrolls games. Camels? Yeah, Daggerfall. They have camels in Daggerfall. Mm hmm. And Arena. Uh, we we got uh, on. Everyone everyone knows Arena is not a real Elder Scrolls. <laughs> All of them had in there. I know I was on the uh, I was talking to KDR Mickey, and they were talking about. They do have them. Yes, oh they do. My goodness. These are all, all right. these are all the Skyrim kitties who've never played any any Elder Scrolls game besides Morrowind, and you, I've just, or, I've or just Skyrim. Never, I've, just never, I've just never played Daggerfall or Arena. Yeah, but. Wicked Daggerfall had him. Yeah, no, it's not weird. And actually, you know, Guar, like, no one complained about Guar. Like, Guars are the best, all right? I don't want to hear it. Our normal there's, horses. There's a, there's a whole bunch of camels. Oh Our bears. God. Why bears? Bears will not let bear, you ride them. Bear, yeah, bears will I, bite your face I, off. I was going to say, <laughs> but bear, 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 bears are definitely in the game. I want a moose. I want a moose from up north, yeah. I feel like a moose would be a good like. Um, Where would mooses what a, what come else? from in Elder like, in Tamriel? Yeah, yeah, the Nords. Yeah, no, no, the else? moose. The what Skyrim else? Two crowd. No, <laughs> Skyrim. Skyrim. When people say two. Skyrim Two, I literally want to kill myself. Yeah, I know. Like immediately. Uh, all right, all right. Let me let me just throw this out there. I think. All they're trying to say when people do bring up Skyrim 2, besides the idiot, is just mainly that the next game's probably going to be in the fourth era. It's probably going to have some ties to the Skyrim story with the with the Thalmor. Like people who actually think that the next game's going to be in Skyrim, no, it's just just stop. That's absolutely ridiculous. No, that's that's just it. That's, I know what you're saying, but most people don't even know that. The game is called Elder Scrolls Skyrim. They just call it. They think the game's called Skyrim. They don't know anything huh. about Elder Scrolls. No, that what this is about. That's what the sad part is. The people who are making these complaints have no idea what in creation they're talking about. Go play Oblivion, people. Uh, well, I go play Morrowind. Go play, go play Daggerfall. Daggerfall's the best. You know, I I I actually do. I have Daggerfall installed. I might play that one night. Just like stream it, just because. Go it's back be awesome. to Dragon Age. Get off this podcast. Oh, get off Dragon Age. What a boring game. I agree. I like, I, I like Dragon Age. I, I, did just... too. I liked it, but I like The Witcher Three better. Me too. Witcher Three is way better, but anyway. I just beat. I just beat it anyway. This is an Elder Scrolls podcast, people. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, camels, 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 and but, but yeah, camels. But yeah, yeah camels. I, I, that's interesting. I didn't know camels were in Daggerfall. So yep. I'm actually I actually don't mind them as much as I did before. I still think it's a funny thing to see riding around though. People are saying, let's, let's hop over the lava and stone falls on our camels. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Glass and you're saying I'm waiting for a rideable niche. I'm waiting for silt striders. That would be such Shards. a cool fast trail. Like if, if they opened up like the proper Morrowind area and the fast instead of using a waystone, it was like just a giant silt strider that like they should could use. That would be so awesome. That's how they should do it. It just needs to happen. Even that if it way. functioned the same way as it, it would still be cool to see it. That was a that was a big question at launch. Was you know where where are the still striders at? Why are they not here? Like oh we have waste shrines. Okay, okay but but. J.K. Rowling just called Zoss. You, they're going to sue you. I'm I'm actually doing the main storyline quest, and right now, uh, Mana Marco and Abner Tharn are doing the Harry Potter thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh right. Right. All right. Anything else on this that's, crown store before we move that's on? En that's enough camel talk for one day. Enough camel talk. All right, I'm fine with that. Let's go ahead and move on to the next little bit of notes, which is patch 2.3.3 hit the PTS this week, which is an incremental patch that addressed issues with Thieves Guild, Game Pack, various quests, art, gameplay, and the Mall of Lorcaj trial. In addition, we continue to fix issues with the gate base game patch, including combat, itemization, and UI. In this patch, we'll be closing Azura Star campaign and enabling the Hatters campaign that will allow champion system abilities to be used. 
Um, so again, as a general note, the 64-bit client is still not working as intended, I guess. Um, and we're, I guess, can't use it for if you're using Windows 8.1 or Windows 10 currently. So it's still kind of busted. Focus charge, focus charge still doesn't work. Oh yeah, and big news: Focus Charge got some got, got some updates, but it it's says, still it not says, broken. Made further improvements to this ability and its morphs to prevent you from getting locked out of using <laughs> other abilities. Bloody well, thank, hell, thank you for putting that in the notes. <laughs> I love it. I love it when games have like this one unfixable thing that is literally impossible to fix. It's it's funny when it's just one thing like that. And it's just, just scrap it and give it a normal animation. It's not that bloody hard. No one gives a crap about this shitty no. little spear you have in your hand anyway. Just make it a charge. That's what, what we care about is it's a magic charge. We don't care what the graphic looks like. Exactly. That's true. Jump up and, I'll, jump, I'll jump up and headbutt them for all I care. Give me a tutu and I'll pirouette towards them. I don't care as long as it actually works. Um, on top of that, one of the other things that I, I like how they added in the notes, a little bit of humor in the notes, the clemency passive can now be used uh, when accosted by guards. Unfortunately, the guards haven't quite gotten the idea yet and will attempt to yeah. beat you into submission in response. So, <laughs> Oh, Gina. Seriously, cat. Upside down. I will give you away. Like I will give you away to people. Anyone want this cat? I'm like seriously, here's a Khajiit. You may have her. <laughs> what's what's that hashtag? Uh, ESOTR is using right now. Uh, Khajiit, Khajiit lives, lives matter. Khajiit lives matter. <laughs> Not the way I treat this cat. <laughs> well, that's because she keeps interrupting me during podcasts. I love her otherwise. All right. Yeah, they add that stuff in there just for just for notes. Um, it's funny. You could check out the patch notes. There wasn't really a whole lot. Uh, a couple of animation fixes for the ancient Yakutan armor. Um, Thieves Guild armor stuff got changed. Um, a few changes to the Claver or clairvoyant guards, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyone else see anything in there that was of note besides you know focus charge is still broken? First thing I do when I get to these is scroll down to Templar. So. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I do I the do same that. thing. I go no. straight um, down to Sorcerer, and I'm like, all right, what do they do? <laughs> Wicked Wolf says, my cat would tear my eyes out if I did that to her. <laughs> Just flip her upside down and stare <laughs> at her. This cat, for some odd reason, loves me to death. She is my Khajiit who who hates my wife, Thais, and thinks she's my mate. So she really is a Khajiit. She follows me around like a dog. She just... Anywhere I'm at, she has to be here. So, yeah, most other cats, I wouldn't... Well, actually, I'd pick all my cats up like that. They're all really good cats. Um, but, uh, yeah, I know. I wouldn't do that with any other cat. They literally will, like, tear you apart. Yeah, yeah. So. All right. Final bit of news and probably the best thing to happen since sliced bread. Um, I was going to say since chamber pots, but, you know... They don't have those in, in Elder Scrolls, except for you can steal them. For some odd reason, they're in everyone's cabinets. Um, no, seriously, I, I've never found chamber pots anywhere but in cabinets. And I'm sitting there going, who keeps a chamber pot in a cabinet where you keep your food? Well, I mean, when you use it, you don't want to, like, smell it. Well, I know, but you keep your food in the cabinets, so why? Well, I don't know. I, Makes it taste better. I guess. Makes it taste better. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, the good bit of news and the thing that Krabby pretty much sent me uh, an all-caps Twitter message. Cross-faction grouping coming to all trials and DSA with Thieves Guild patch. And they did announce yes. this on ESO Live as well. Kind of like at the first thing. Oh, by the way, we didn't really talk about it, but it's coming. Um, I guess it's still acting kind of funky, but um, they're working on it, which... Right. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. You know how many people in the guild want to go, but can't because they're on DC or AD? This is... Oh, I'm so happy about this. Yeah. No, it, it's definitely a, a, a very good thing because of, of, of this. So, yeah, we try to run trials with our guild every, um, every Friday. We try to run... We also do dungeons on on Tuesday, pledge stuff. Um, unfortunately, 
our Thursday events are still going to be EP only because I do open world stuff and Imperial City, so EP only. So get your EP characters, guild members, just so you know. Um, but yeah, this we we try to always fill up, and I know quite a few people in guild who are like, why aren't you AD or why aren't you DC? I want to go, but I don't have an EP. I mean, I've kind of followed the same issue. Um, I was talking to KDR Mickey last night, and they were... They, he runs with a guild that's all AD, and I don't have an AD either. Well, I do, but he's level three, and I have a DC. He's level eight, um, and I have six EP characters that range from 18 to VR 16. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't play those those wacky characters. Yeah, there's a lot of people that we don't get to play with that. At least me and me in general, I'd love to play with a lot of these people, and that's just mm-hmm. not possible. But now it is, so good job, Zoss. Yeah, it's a good change. It's a yeah. really good change. Um, really, really good change. So, or Sunny Black just logged on, so I went and say Sunny Krabby. Go ahead and give me your thoughts on this, because I know you were excited. I I just can't wait. I mean. I, we we couldn't do it last night, or I'm sorry, two nights ago, because um, you know we were short people anyway. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but um, no, I mean, the past few times we've actually managed to do trials, we've needed like a, f- a couple of people, <laughs> and those couple of people would have been guild members if you know we had this. So I'm I'm hoping that when this comes in, we'll be able to do full guild runs. Because I mean, I know, I know there's a few people that want to do it with us really bad. Right. But they can't. Well, even right now, Sunday at three in the morning, we have or three in the afternoon, we have we have 129 people in the guild because I cleared out a bunch of people. There's 11 people on right now, and one, two, three, four, five, six, six of us are VR 16, and a couple of people I see on here have VR 16s. So we have the people to to do it. It's just we are so spread out across all the different factions that. You know, we're kind of SOL at this point. Mm-hmm. At least that's what it feels like. Um, so, yeah, no, this is a really good change, I, I feel. Uh, Esteldian, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, I think it's a long overdue change. Um, when, when I was running my guild, we actually were Daggerfall faction only, pretty much for the reason that it was frustrating to have other people of other factions that you couldn't do anything with. Um, now this opens it up big time for you. And because it's all to do with the... Undaunted guys, it's not even necessary all that law breaking because they were always about doing the dungeons and killing things and nothing to do with, with they didn't give a crap about the whole sort of three faction war anyway. Right. So it, it makes sense that trials and dungeons, you can do the cross faction and there is a sort of excuse to the law. It's like they, they work beyond, kind of like the Fighters Guild and the Mage Guild aren't really tied to the factions, neither is the Undaunted Guild. So why should the Undaunted type content require you to stick with only your Dagger 4 people or your AD people? I completely agree. Uh, Obi in chat has a big me with an exclamation point because I know Obi's been wanting to play with us for a while, but I think he joined AD back at you know the launch because Elder Scrolls Off the Record joined AD, which they didn't even want to do at this point as far as I know. it's I, After talking with a bunch of them, they went because that's where the majority of when they held the vote went, but it wasn't the crew's first choice. It just so happened that's what everyone wanted. Um, even though 90% of those players are no longer even in the game right now. Um, so now they, I know they re-rolled as DC because it was their favorite faction. Uh, and I know Obi did that. So Obi's been like sending me messages constantly like, I've, I've not done a dungeon yet. I can't wait for cross-faction so we can do dungeons again. And I'm excited because then I'll actually get to to play with Obi in, in in content that I like to do, not just PvP-related things. Um It'll be a lot of fun. I, I cannot wait for that. And and f- just trials like the dungeons alone would have been great for our pledge nights, because at this point I expect our pledge nights to grow exponentially. Like normally we get enough for one group with maybe enough to not quite a full second, so we run multiple runs. I'm expecting that we'll have quite a few people ready to roll going forward. You know, like couple groups running at the same time. Because we always have a bunch of people who are, you know, we all were EP before, but now now we'll be able to do these events and be able to do them all cross-faction. That'd be fun to do some races. 
yeah. get two get two groups at the same time so you can beat it first. <laughs> Wicked made a funny point. He goes, "There was cross faction in the trailer. The Nord, the Nord Elf and Breton had to join forces to fight the danger there for a second. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> it was it was all about five seconds worth of the trailer, but for about five seconds they were BFFs. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's true. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of things right now within Elder Scrolls that actually fits lore ugh, a lot of ways, even when you're playing Skyrim. There's a civil war going on now between the Stormcloaks and the and the Imperials, but I mean there were other things going on that you aided both at that point. You know, it wasn't all just about one or the other. Right, and you'd even find the random dark elf walking down the road that goes, "I'm going to, I'm going to join the Stormcloaks." Even though they're all about, you know, the Nords, they have it right. Because, you know, you wouldn't want somebody, the, the Dunmer wouldn't want people invading their home. So it's, it's like, a, it's yeah, a shame I the support, Stormcloaks I support were the wrong. Or outlawing the Alms of E, which actually I think at that point in time, they don't, no one wor worships them anymore anyway, since, you know, Almalexi is dead, Sothasil's dead. Oh, I'm sorry, did I break lore? So, <laughs> oops, Spoiler! Vivek has disappeared. He's disappeared. Yeah, there is no more Amsavi in the fourth era. The... I, can't, I can't let Krabby have the last word on that one. No, the Stormcloaks are not wrong. Anyways. No, they're, they're wrong. They're wrong. They're, they're, it's fine. They're wrong. But, uh, let's go. Uh, you shut your dirty whore mouth. Whatever. Filthy mirror lover. That's what he is. Right. Yeah. I actually, I've always went with the Stormcloaks because I'm Nord, but I'm also a stout. Like, I think I was telling Wicked. Uh, and I started listening to, again, um, the history of Rome, and I love how the Empire is essentially the Roman Empire. It's fantastic. Well, that down to, like, like um, their armor, you know, their yeah. style. It's, it's called, it, I love it. <laughs> I actually really like it. Yeah, me too. I, I adore it. So in my heart, I want to cry for the Empire, but, you know, but See, the thing is, like, you've got to side with the Empire because... The sky will be part of the empire, and they'll be stronger to fight. But, 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 but no, you're not. But sweet baby, not yet born. Talos is at stake here, and who cares about Talos? You shut your dirty whore mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what, Krabby? You, like, you dark, I don't. I don't. Dark I've elf, always dark played. Elf, I don't I played Skyrim as a dark elf. That's I don't. It. I don't like Krabby on this show anymore. Like he's dark he's elf all the way. Really, really, really upsetting me. Phrase the three. Um, we'll see. There you go. By by the time of the fourth era, there's only one, and who knows where the hell he is. He let, the one. He let <laughs> Bardow <laughs> crash into Vivek like, City and wipe out all life in Morrowind. So, good praise, guy praise, there. Praise the one. Nobody knows where he is. <laughs> praise the one who was protecting us <laughs> from the Ministry him. of Truth. But praise him. But actually, then got you know lazy. What I, might do? I might actually. Um, I have Morrowind. I might actually install it and get like all the overhaul mods and everything. I to try to make it playable. I actually had that, and um, one of the nights I was streaming, I put out a poll seeing who would, what game I would like, what people would like to see me play. Which is funny because it's always anytime Elder Scrolls Online is on there, which is fine. That's I, why I, I put it on. You it up. <laughs> yeah, it's always Elder Scrolls Online. But what's funny is. It's normally such a huge disparity, like it's Elder Scrolls Online by like ninety five percent of the votes, but Morrowind with the with the um, enhancement mods actually was, I won't say close, but closer than any other game has gotten. So, one I think day. The lack of voice acting is the one thing I'd have to get over. Mm. Here, here's the thing. Even when I play ESO, I read all the stuff anyway. Like anytime I come across a book, I read it anyway. So. <laughs> Yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind the books, but it's mostly the NPCs and more. When like, like when it comes to ESO, I know they have the big old block where you can read the, the subtitles. I have an I have an add-on, or I used to have an add-on. It's pretty buggy that just makes that all black. So you focus more on re looking at people's faces. I've always had the problem where I talk to somebody and I'm just looking at the, their boobs. The subtitles. Yeah, their boobs. exactly. Yeah, their boobs. Yeah. That happens to me all the time. Um. I think it was also the amount of text in Morrowind because when you picked up it was that entire box whereas at least in Skyrim and the later games and even this game they do it in digestible 
subsections. Like they, they may read you a paragraph, but they split it up. So it's not as noticeable, if you know what I mean. Like, oh, it's one line. Oh, that's easy to read. And then you click an option. Oh, there's another line. Whereas in Morrowind, it's like a massive wall of text, like a massive paragraph, and you get to select an option to say. It's and that changes. amount of text. Yeah, it is. It reminds me of like Baldur's Gate or Neverwinter, where it's like, you know, the top-down hardcore RPG, but bam, there you talk to somebody, text, like everywhere. And but, there, there's those there's those NPCs that you ask them one simple question, and all of a sudden like a two paragraph answer comes up. It's like, dude, I don't, I don't want your whole life story, man. I just I just want you to answer my question. Like, you're oh you're looking goodness. for the response that just says TL, TLDR. Yeah, TLDR. Exactly. Excuse me, where's the bank? Well, let me tell you a story. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's I don't know. it is what it is. I guess I don't know. I, to me, it's. The generation was there. Like, in that time, that was amazing. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's not right. It, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just... Oh, yeah, times change. Things evolve, yeah. I mean, at the, yeah, technology, you, 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 you... If I told you you had to download a 70-gig game that was Elder Scrolls Online, people would be like, I don't have a big enough hard drive for that. You know what I mean? Like, people would like, be like, ah. Even if you said that probably a little more than five years ago, people would have been like, that's kind of a lot. Yeah, right? And now that's kind of the base. Like, you can get a two terabyte high drive for like $80. Right. I mean, right. No, there's a, there's a lot of things. Like, that's just how times and technology changes. You couldn't, even Mar Marwin does have some voice acting. There's yeah. only like three lines, but it does have some. Um, and, and when it comes to the Elder Scrolls, it mainly depends on your first game. You know, most people usually fall in love with the first game they play, and that's their idea of Elder Scrolls. So that was a you start if you start if you yeah if you start with Morrowind, Morrowind, then all of a sudden you like pass through Oblivion a little bit, then jump into Skyrim. You're kind of like, uh, this is Elder Scrolls. Like, okay, this is this is very different. But for me, my first game was actually Skyrim. So when right. I went back to play when I went back to play Morrowind. It was kind of alien to me. Right. And Morrowind was actually my first computer game, period, so it always has a special place in my heart. I've actually never even finished Morrowind, like, ever. <laughs> I haven't either. Just because I love it, I get into it. I, I, have I, us so many I, usually, hours. Just expl I usually just explore. So. I have kind of a heartbreaking story about Oblivion, actually. So, uh, I, I, you know, I had bought it. Uh, well, it was sixty, seventy dollars, sixty dollars at the time, and uh, I was dating this girl in high school, complete, you know, evil person, all right. And we were we were dating, and Valentine's Day was rolling around. I didn't have any money, and she was like, "Why don't you sell your games to buy me something?" And I was like, "Oh, one of those." Excuse me. I had a dumpster. And, I, and I, I, she ended up guilting me enough that I actually sold Morrow on uh, uh, Oblivion. And I was like, and then like I three weeks later, it, yeah. three weeks later, I bought it again. But I was so upset. <laughs> your response should have been, "Why don't you sell your body so you can buy me new game?" <laughs> <laughs> Go work the corner, Sweeney. It makes you feel better about yourself. Uh, I was it. upset. I would be. Well, you know, when I went to sell my PS3, I took Oblivion with me to sell, and I opened it up, and my Oblivion wasn't in the case, and that was a sign. If you look now. I still have it, even though I don't have a PS3, because it wasn't in the case. But now it is, and I've got it. Oblivion on PS3, you are, you are a trooper. <laughs> Oblivion on PS3, man, I got it. But I don't have a PS3, so I can't play it. Any console, that's, anywhere, that's you're a trooper. Though, Oblivion. Oh, I thought you were going to say it's a console. That too, but it's Oblivion, so console's where it belongs. <laughs> Dude, Oblivion, Oblivion's like one of the best games in the world, so... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, enough arguing that. Let's go ahead and roll right into gameplay. What have we been doing this week? And I actually kind of want to start with Krabby. Let me... Let me okay. Tuesday, Pledge Night. We actually... Um, Kilted wasn't... Avi, were you there Tuesday? Nope. Who was there? Oh, um, Arc. Arc, Arc set up. We actually had two groups of people. Really? Yeah, Kilted wasn't there. So we actually had two groups going. It was awesome. Oh, that, that does day, remind me. Yeah, it, 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 on Twitter, Kilt was like, I shouldn't, I just shouldn't show up anymore. I was gonna say, I saw that. But, like, but yeah, we 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 ended up having like two groups going. Um, 
That's that awesome. was good. That's awesome. I'm glad um, to hear that. And then Thursday night we did uh, we did Imperial City with you and that. I mean, I'm sure you'll get into it, but that uh, yeah. was I, th that was probably some of the most fun I've had in Imperial City. Um, when you were two shotting people, I was I was like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> what is going? I was like, I targeted this guy and Ag already has him dead. I'm like, what? Like he just unstealthed. I was, was awesome. giggling like a little girl. It was hilarious. It, it, it was really fun. It was really fun that night. Um, Friday night, we didn't have enough for trials, so we ended up doing uh, DSA. normal normal DSA, which was which was a lot of fun. I was surprised at how long it was. If that was scaled to VR sixteen and had proper loot, that would be a really really good end game for four people. I actually yeah, and uh, saying that a long time. <laughs> we have been. I know even Delta. I mean, well, this is my first time being in there, but right. that's how I. I mean, it, I, that, that's how I feel about it now, at least. Even Deltia said something about the that same line. I saw a, a tweet that he put out just a little while ago because I know we've been complaining about it for a while because we're mostly PVE. Um, but even he was like, "Listen, guys, you already have Mouse Marina." Level all the trials to VR16. Get Vet to VR16, or you know Vet DSA to VR16, and then you have competitive, fun content for solo, four man, and twelve man content for your PVE. Right. Like if they up those and got good rewards, it's true. They they really would have, um, like you said, fun, very difficult content for all the different groups. You know, whether you want to do solo leaderboards, uh, small group four-man leaderboards, or trials for 12 people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I really liked it. Um, I still couldn't get over the fact I got five champion points out of one normal run. That was crazy. How many champion points do you have? Oh, jeez. I I want to say, and I'm, I'm bad at math, but let's say I have in the area of 70 in each of the three sections. Okay. Okay. So whatever, whatever that is. Two hundred and ten. Yeah, something sure. like that. Why not? Yeah, I still have the most here. How much is that? Three hundred and forty, I want to say. Nice. Yeah. I, I'm at, oh, I'll be able to tell you here in a second how many I have. I, uh, I'm up like two sixty-eight or something like that. But they they added the catch-up mechanic. <coughs> excuse me, um, which allowed you to. Um, they lowered the amount of experience needed the further down the uh, list you were. So the experience requirement gets higher and higher as you go forward. But, I mean, that's that's actually fairly, you know, standard practice. Um, so that's, that's something. Um, yeah, it, it, it's cool. It, it definitely is cool that you got that many. I think I walked away with three, I think. Three. In, in that's, that. still, that's still good. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else? Uh, no. I after Friday night, I took it really light on ESO this weekend. I played a lot of other stuff. I had a weird kick on like um, murder mystery games. I don't know why, but um, you know, full motion video ones too. Really weird. I don't know why I did that. But yeah, no, that's pretty much my ESO for the week. Ended on Friday for the most part. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, Avi, what about you? You know, work has <laughs> no. I haven't got to play any actually. Oh. My week has been all work, all sleep since it's my first week at work. I've been very you need tired. To quit that job. Oh my goodness, I want to, but that, all I'm thinking of is next by next month probably, or you know, like in like the next thirty days or so, I should have my new computer. Nice. So. That's, that's a very big plus, you know, and I'm already about to tell them that uh, I want to get Sundays off because this is a little too much for me. Like right after we finish this podcast, I have to jump in my car and drive to work. Ooh. And I'm not I'm not I'm not big on this. It's been stuck in my head the whole episode. So, uh, yeah, I should have my new computer, though, and that's going to be awesome. So I'm finally going to be able to play with you guys and good graphics and uh, take a billion screenshots and yep. use add on use add ons again. You know, I miss add ons and. I'm 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 so happy. I'm gonna bring the tear to my eye. That is, that's pretty awesome. It really is. Um, you'll well, you've been playing on the console for a little bit, so you know what the graphics can look like. But you'll be able to actually right. mod it. Get you know, yeah, 
you'll yeah, and I'll and I'll get the I'll get to play on all my characters. You know, that that's my that's my number one thing. If the PlayStation, I think we talked about it before. If the PlayStation Three was you know crossed mm-hmm. so people on PS3 can play with people on PC, I'd I'd just play on my PS or PS4. Sorry, I'd play on my PS4, but it can't. It doesn't. I don't have my characters, so I'm getting the new computer, and it's going to be amazing. Right. I'm curious of what Estelle actually looks like. In, in good graphics, what does she look like? In my in my game with the soft, everybody has very soft skin. Everybody looks like they're made out of clay. Right. Almost. She is. She is beautiful. Hmm. So, everyone, everything looks like a painting in my game. So we'll, we'll see. Right. But that's that's really been my week. I haven't got to play too much. Haven't got to play much at all. Uh, I come home from work and I really just play The Witcher for a couple hours and go to bed. So. Right. That's been, that's been me. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Soon enough, though, I'll be back on. Th- I'll be back there at uh, the open world night. Is that what we're calling it? Yep. Uh, sure, we'll call it open world night. That sounds I'll good be, enough. I'll, I'll be back on open world night on Thursday because I have Thursday off. So. Nice. I'll have some gameplay for the next episode, which is episode 100. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we're gonna have. Episode 100 is, of course, next week, so we're going to have a lot of stuff uh, lined up for that. And, um, you know, I ho- hope everyone comes out for that episode. We're really excited for that one. Oh, no, Avi's getting sick. He can't go to 100. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 oh, no. Not, not, not going to happen. Uh, Thais is going to be there as well, and, and uh, so that's going to be exciting. Um, and Estelle and myself. So we got a, a full crew of... The original cast, if you will, or uh, well, I guess about as original as we had after about episode 50. Um, so yeah, super excited about all of that. Um, my playtime was, I didn't get much either, unfortunately, because of work and all of that crap. Um, the first playtime I actually got this week that was of some substance was Thursday night, uh, which was our open world night. We went to Imperial City. And it was cool because we actually had a good number of people, which is weird because Imperial City is one of my favorites. It's actually my favorite thing to do uh, for open world because of just how it is. Everyone gets rewards for doing everything. You know what I mean? Like, you kill bosses, you get money, you get items, you get all this different stuff. You know, you get all these different rewards, um, including... um, you know, like soul gems, cash, items that are VR16 if you are VR16. Actually, I think you get it even... No, it scales for you. Um, so you get all these different rewards. And then you also get Telvar stones that you can use to buy even better rewards. So no matter what you're doing, you're earning something. But it's always been our worst night. Like, people just are, I guess, intimidated by Imperial City because of the PvP that can happen. Um but what's kind of nice is by this point in the game, Imperial City is kind of empty for the most part. There's small groups running around, but nothing of substance. So it definitely is easier to, to go around. And we actually had a group of, it fluctuated between seven and eight people, I know. Um, I was there. I'm trying to remember everyone that was there. Krabby was there. Zakir was there, uh, TS Fangirl was there, um, KDR Mickey was there, I believe, uh, we, and a bunch of other people from the guild, um, Slayton and his friend were there. Uh, there were was, a, was Ridge there? Ridge was there, I think, at the, near the end. He showed up yeah. a little later. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of fun. It we were running around the whole idea was we were going to do bosses that was what our main goal was so we did district bosses um (laughs) uh as as uh zakir just said that low level who was slayton's friend who came in um i can't pronounce her character's name but uh i'm not gonna say her i know I know her at name, but I'm not going to say it because I believe it's her real name. So <laughs> I'm not going to say it out of courtesy for that. Um, but she she showed up. She actually had a lot of fun and ended up joining the guild. So did uh, um, uh, um, TS Fangirl join the guild so she could run events with us more often. 
because we do it every week. And we, we had a couple people who were not part of the guild, but joined after that because it was just a ton of fun. We were running around killing all the bosses, just making giant loops. Um, and, of course, whenever there was PvP to be had, as soon as someone screamed, oh, look, there's a banana, there's a blueberry, I was, like, crit rushing everything. And I was just like, oh, well, there's Ag, he's already there. Um, and as Krabby <laughs> said, by the time people turned around to look, they were already dead. I know at one point we saw a group of three of them, and I, like, charged, killed one almost in one hit because he was almost dead, turned around, hit the other guy, and it, it, I think I killed two before everyone else got up to me, and then uh, everyone else got up, and the guy tried to run, and we, like, snared him down and got him too. So it was, it was a good time. Uh, obviously, I killed somebody and got, like, 680 stones in one shot. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, it, it was it was really cool. Um, I already had that achievement because I've done it in the past, but you get achievement for that. It was it was just a lot of fun running around doing that. And I know even on Friday, um, oh, it was Akira's like, don't forget crabby rushing bosses with no prep time at all. I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. I think it was the very first boss. Nope. Still don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> I seen a boss. Hey, look, there's the boss. And there goes Krabby. And he's like, nope. are we pulling? Krabby's like, already did. <laughs> Just making stuff up out of the pl out of nowhere. Zakir's yeah, poor repair bill. He's like, everyone's going healing. Okay, just put circles on me. Those lovely, lovely healing circles. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it was probably one of the most fun we had. And I know... Uh, um, Krabby, you were even saying the next day, like if we were when we were trying to get together for the trials or, or for our end game night, and we didn't have enough people, um, but we had enough for DSA. You're like, I don't know, I kind of just feel like doing Imperial City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really want to go back, but you know. Yeah, it it is it is because it was a ton of fun, and uh, it for my end game nights, Imperial City is what I would choose to do because there's just so much to do in Imperial City. Um, but you know, I'll do what people want, whether it's Rothgar bosses or whatever, but Imperial we City, we should definitely do Imperial City this next Thursday. I, I kind of, you know, like I don't like to double up on my events that I've done, but Every we had time I show up, it's Rothgar. I know, but I don't try to, I, you know what? I, I, I was going with this. I don't like to double up, but we had such a good turnout and people were having such a good time in Imperial City. I may just try to recreate the magic. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good idea. Because it was fun and I have to make sure I message Ark the day ahead of time because poor Ark was so tired. He tried to show up and he's like, I'm just, I'm, I, he fell asleep. No, he showed up for the, the, uh, um, the end game night. And I'm like, well, where were you for, you know? Um, Imperial City, because I had to charge all the enemies myself, because normally it's it's Ark who, who shield charges, not me. And he was like, I passed out, so I have to make sure I send Ark a message like the day ahead so he can be prepared. Because um, that's just something that needs to happen. He needs to, uh, he needs to be there, because next week you'll hear both Ark and myself charging at the enemies. Um, of course, then we did uh, normal DSA, just messing around. I streamed it a little bit, so we had a couple people on the stream who were watching and got to hear all my colorful nicknames for the enemies. And I say colorful because <laughs> I'm not going to repeat them here, but um, I know uh, Avi, you know a couple of the names we had for them, because when we did it together, we were shouting those names. Um, <laughs> so there were some colorful nicknames for the bosses and, and, and the trash mobs. Um, and Zakir's like, it was fun, super fun. We can always do a, uh, a sewers run. Yeah, there's, there's a lot we can do in Imperial City. There's I so much sewers. to do. Um, flying women of the night <laughs> with loose morals. <laughs> uh, that's the, I guess, politically correct way of the things I was shouting out. So, yeah, yeah. It, it was a good time. I had a lot of fun with that. Um, Saturday, I was so busy doing some house cleaning stuff that I never... I, I got to play a very little bit. I got to play in the evening. Uh, I did my crafting writs. Uh, and then what I did is I started leveling my um, Khajiit Dragon Knight again because I'm trying to get her to VR 
you know, VR rank before the change, so I earn champion points and stuff off her. And I'm pleased to say at this point in time, I am doing a quest. I am level 49 and I have 18% to go. I was kind of hoping I'd be VR1 before we got the gameplay, but I'm not yet. But I have seven, oh, 17% to go yet, and then I'll be level 50, a.k.a. VR1 on, on this girl. So I'll, as soon as I finish this quest, I imagine I'll be VR1 on her. And then i got to move to my uh, second Templar. I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, but yeah, that was kind of what I, that's all I really did. I mean, today I'm doing the same thing, just trying to get her to VR1 because I'm so close I can taste it. Uh, someone in, I, I apologize. I had a note. Someone told me exactly how, um, the mouse from arena works. You can go back in it, but you have to wait like 10 minutes. You go out and go back in after 10 minutes and you just have to let it respawn. Um, cause I did not know that. Um, but they were nice enough to inform me how that worked, and I feel really bad because I, I can't remember who it was who told me. But the knowledge did not come from me. It came from someone else um, because the the uh, obviously the uh, Mouse from Arena is really good experience at low level. I actually think I'm going to take my Templar in there. My, my level 31 Templar is going to go to Mouse from and do that to level like daily because doing it once a day is just such good experience i don't know why i wouldn't wouldn't do it you know i mean i mean you could just go in go up to the eighth eighth round jump out drop quest pick up quest again jump in start the first eight all over again and just skip the ninth one i guess yeah you could do that couldn't you if you if yeah. you didn't want to wait the 10 minutes yeah um, I didn't even think about doing that. I guess if I was really doing a speed run, but I mean, 10 minutes after doing that, at least with how I currently am, you know, going to check on my little Nordling, etc. that, that seems like a, a decent amount of time to be able to get away and come back. Glassnar, he was watching <laughs> in chat. So if you are here today live, um, and watching the chat, you'll, you'll hear the name for the, um, what I called the little trash mobs in what 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 arena was it the one with the uh, the um, Dunmary slavers house dress the house dress slavers they have a very unique name and Glassman oh, put it in chat I see yeah you see it now you you know what I called them uh, that's hilarious. yeah yeah so I was shouting that out on the on the on the thing. Um, I have been getting into more streaming of ESO. Whenever I do guild events, uh, I do stream it. So for those of you who can't join, but like to whatever, uh, I do stream those events and I don't tell the people I'm with because we were doing DSA and they're like, what, you're streaming this? Yup. <laughs> so they got to see us all fail. So, you know, that was, that was fun. That was definitely fun. Um, that was my gameplay, guys. So um, I guess that's kind of that's kind of it for this week. Um, I guess uh, before we before we shout off or, or leave, um, a couple things. Next week is our episode 100. So if anyone has any unique memories of the past hundred episodes of Tales that you would like to share. Please send us an email, contact at uh, dungeoncrawlernetwork.com. Go to our website, dungeoncrawlernetwork.com, hit the Contact Us page. I would love to hear some of our listeners' favorite moments from Tales of Tamriel as well. So if you had any, please send that forward. I mean, we're you have till next week. Um, I would really love to hear some people's thoughts, like what their favorite things were. Um, also, you can uh, follow the show at youtube.com slash Dungeon Crawler Network. We have our website, DungeonCrawlerNetwork.com, where we have all of our uh, episodes from this podcast, as well as everything else we do on the network, as well as all of our Elder Scrolls Online guides. I'm going to be redoing all the skill use guides for 2.3 here soon, once we get close to launch. Uh, and I know what the launch build is going to be. Um, if you would like to contribute, I'm looking for some PvP um comments so if if you've had any pvp comments please let me know on those builds and i would love to add them and test them out because i don't i do it from a pve side and not from a pv 
PvP side, but if there's some PvP notes I can add to it, I would definitely like to do that as well. Uh, you can follow the show on Twitter at Tales of Tamriel. Our network site is at Dungeon Crawl Net. And that's all we got for you guys. So let's go ahead and give our final thoughts and sign off. Let's start with Esteldian. Uh Yeah, my second to last episode. So it was a good one. Nice to see Crabdy over here. Um, so that's it. it was good now to, I'm good depressed. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I'm really sad now. I'm just upset. <laughs> You're still going to be around though, right? Oh, he's still part of the network, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll still be lurking. Yeah, he, he's going to be moving over with us and doing some other things with me for uh, some of the independent MMOs out there, Saga Vusemia, Pantheon, that kind of stuff, um, as those go forward. Um, but yeah, no, it's still part of the network, just stepping away from Tails. Nice, nice. Makes me sad. Um, and all right, let's... Uh, Avi, how about you, sir? Where people can find you, etc. Yeah. This was a very good episode. I learned that uh, camel camels are actually a thing. So, right? Good jobs and good jobs, Max. Say, you said you're supporting lore. They actually are really good with their lore. Like they are really good they with are. their lore. I was confused. I was confused at first. As soon as I typed in the pictures and I saw them, my my mind got blown a little bit. You're so. like, oh wow, they actually do fit lore, huh? My like, God, oh, camels. Okay, Go figure. Cool. Yeah, go fig, exactly. Go figure. Now you're like, well, maybe I have to buy one because it's lore centric now. You know, it, it, uh, I still think they're a bit ridiculous, but, <laughs> but they fit lore, so that, that's all that matters. Yeah, if they but, fit uh, lore. Yeah. So, but where to find me? You can find me pretty much everywhere on Steam, in game on ESO, on PC, the PS4 network, uh, Twitter, everywhere at Avi Optimal. A V I O P T I M A L. All right, uh, Krabby, sir. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's uh, at Krabby654. Um, and, you know, if anybody if anybody wants to join the guild or anything, because these event nights we're doing are so much fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes we, we have less people than we want, maybe we want, but the, the goal is to have more people than we want. But if anybody listening is new to the game, they feel like they don't know what they're doing, but they want to do endgame stuff or whatever then, you know, join us in Wings of Fate. You know, send a message to Jellos or myself in-game. You know, it's at Krabby654, like everything else. Um, and join the guild. I mean... <laughs> uh, Zakir just in chat says, you can find Krabby aggroing bosses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, but no, really, though, I mean, it would be nice to have more like uh, more people that want to do things, too. Absolutely. Um, so that's my little my little rant. My little rant is I just finished that quest and I'm 2% to level. Wow. <laughs> That's my little rant. Almost there. Almost there. Can I take a shower yet? Yes, yes. We're, we're ending that up. All right. You can follow me uh, in-game at Agelos, A-G-G-E-L-O-S, on the North American Mega Server. Uh, send me a friend request. Say hello, anything like that. You can, of course, send me a message if you want to join our guild. We do events every Tuesday. Thursday and Friday, but there's always people in the guild, so um, pretty much at any point in time, like, we do official pledge nights on Tuesday where we get together as a group, but I would really encourage people to get together and, and try to do pledges, um, you know, outside of that, like the pledges that happen. I was very pleased to see some people actually actively doing that, checking in guild before they pug. That's that's always cool. Uh, so glad glad to see that. Uh, so if you're interested in joining, send a message to any one of us that are here, with the exception of Stelding, because he's on the EU side. But, you know, that's beside the point. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, at Agelos, A-G-G-E-L-O-S underscore W-O-F for Twitter. Uh, and as I said, you can follow the show, DungeonCrawlerNetwork.com, YouTube.com slash DungeonCrawlerNetwork. Um, give us a like, subscribe, like this video, et cetera, et cetera. That helps us out so much. Um, I want to thank everyone for showing up and be sure to show up next week for episode 100. Have a great night, everybody. Good night. The serpent lights the ancient sky and red of tainted stars. Evil stirs and in its wake the souls of mortals sway. And so
Sun burns bright once more. 